Hey everyone! Welcome back to my Procedural Ruins tutorial series for SiteFX's Project Grot. In the last two chapters, we put a lot of effort into creating interesting details such as our procedural edge damage and flesh. In this chapter, we will go over how to add vertex color to our geometry that a shader in Unreal can read from. Let's get into Udini! Alright, here we are again. So as I said at the end of the last lesson, our work is essentially done uh, in regards to the visuals. And what we need to do now is to plant all the invisible data that we're going to need for Unreal later. And the first and biggest one is uh, the vertex colors. And the reason why we wanted to go with vertex colors is because it allows us to, to be really flexible with the modeling process and it allows us to reuse a handful of textures throughout the whole project so I just need a tileable concrete texture and I can use it for this whole thing. At the same time if I for instance want to have some edge wear along the broken off pieces I can add some vertex colors that will then inform a shader to use a different texture. And another thing is um, for all the broken off parts I would want because we're gonna break apart concrete, we wanna see what's inside, right? So we wanna have a different material for what's inside. And for this big flat area, we wouldn't want just one tileable texture also. We would maybe wanna break that up too. And so we're gonna add some, we're gonna add some vertex color noise to inform the shader that maybe one time it should use a standard concrete and then a dirty concrete, you know? So basically, basically, if you're familiar with Substance Painter, we are essentially building our masks for a smart material, but this material is going to be in Unreal. So what are these supposed to be? Uh, like, what is the data that we need to supply and what do we have to do? Well, you don't need to follow me along 100% in this chapter because what I am showing you is what the rules were for our shader. But of course, you can create your own shader and make each color mean whatever you want it to mean. You don't need to have edge wear and noise and stuff, right? You can have vertex colors for your ambient occlusion or for your position uh, so that maybe in the bottom it's more dirty or, you know, like you can, you can come out with your own rules. I'm just using this to give you a practical example of something you might come across and how you can implement it. So in my case, I just talked to our environment artist and I asked her, so how does your shader work? I didn't make the shader, uh, so how does it work? And she told me for the broken concrete, uh, I have the green channel available. For the edge wear, it's the red channel. If it's black, it's just gonna be the normal concrete. And if I wanna add noise in blue, then it's gonna break up the normal concrete. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna start with the concrete. The first thing we need is we need a black base for the normal uh, concrete. So I'm just gonna get a color node. I'm gonna plug that in and set it to black. So we have our base. And um, what I'm gonna do next is wherever the crevices are, basically where our flesh grew, I wanna turn it green. Well, the cool thing is we basically have that one already. So if we look over here for where we created our mask for our scatter node, uh, we basically have it already. If we want to, we can literally just plug that in at the top. And then what we're gonna do is uh, we just have to, um, we just now have to turn this mask attribute into a color. And it's really easy. All we have to do is we just have to get an attribute wrangle. I'm just gonna type at CD dot G because I wanna affect only the green channel of my color. And I'm gonna say equals um, at mask. And there we go. Now we have our green channel where we wanted it. The next thing is our edge wear. And for the edge wear, we can just calculate the curvature. And there's there are a few tools available to us. I'm just gonna use the labs measure curvature node. Beware that because it has a visualizer that writes into the color channel, we are gonna lose our, uh, our green channel right here. So just make sure to disable it once we have figured out the right amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable the concavity because I don't need that. And I'm mostly interested in the convexity because I wanna have some nice edge wear around the, the sharp corners. But the tensor integral, I'm not entirely sure why, but sometimes it can end up being a little subtle. Uh, so I'm gonna switch to the measure sup. And yeah, this is much more like what I what I was expecting. And I'm just gonna use this one and I'm gonna disable the visualizer and I'm just gonna get another wrangle 
and I'm gonna say at cd.r for the red channel equals at convexity. It's a bit subtle, but you can see that now we have some convexity written into our red channel. And the last one is really easy. As I said, the blue channel is just some noise. And for that, we can just get an attribute noise, plug that in. We can just disable the X and Y channels. And now we have this blue cloud-like noise. Uh, maybe one thing we might wanna do is to change it from positive to zero centered. So there's a bit more contrast between the, the black and the blue. If you want to, you can also play with the element size um, or the type of noise or something. But I think, honestly, this is probably gonna do it. And that's it for the concrete already. <laughs> and for the flesh, uh, it's also not that crazy. First off, thickness, because the cool thing about the flesh is we can use a subsurface scattering shader to give it really this flesh-like feeling uh, with the light shining through and stuff. And something that could maybe also add just a nice little touch is if the thicker parts would, well, be thicker also in, in the subsurface scattering and the thinner parts would have more light shining through them. And what we could do is then we could calculate the thickness, write them into the vertex color and then have that affect the shader. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to my color and same procedure, I'm just gonna first turn it black. In the thicker parts, we could add more red color, which will then be interpreted as more thickness and in the middle, in the thinner parts, we would have less thickness so more light can shine through. If we wanted to, we could actually like calculate the thickness. There is a, a node for that called measure thickness. Um, but the thing is, because we're dealing with relatively, I mean, I'm talking relatively low poly geometry, it's a lot, it is a lot of polygons, but each individual piece of flesh um, doesn't really offer us a lot of geometry to do a proper thickness measure. What I thought what we could do instead is we could just fake it and use an attribute that we already have to our advantage. For instance, the curve view attribute. If you remember in the last lesson, we made this attribute to control the amount that the flesh is allowed to move in, in, in any given direction. The good thing is that um, the sweep node has kept it and we could now use this. All we have to really do is uh, just invert it because right now at the ends it's a value of zero, in the middle it's one, and for our thickness we would want to have a higher value on the start and the end and a lower value in the middle. So we can just get an attribute wrangle node and just type at curve u equals one minus at curve u. And, and then we just write it into the red channel at cd dot r equals at curve u. And that's it. For the green channel, what we thought would be cool would be to also store the distance towards the nearest surface in a color channel. And what's really nice about this one is that there is already a preset for that. So if we go to an attribute wrangle and we click on this little drop down menu, there are some example X snippets and we can use the nearest point distance snippet and just plug in our ruins into the second input. You can see that it now has this nice gradient that uh, calculates the distance towards our ruins. It's storing it in the red channel, which I don't necessarily want, so we can just uh, adjust the code. In the last row, we can just say at cd.g equals at dist, and now we have it in the green channel. And the reason why we wanted the, the distance to the closest surface is a bit of a silly one, but I, I kind of liked it. So if you look closely in some of the footage of the ruins tool, for instance, you can see the flesh uh, pulsating. And what we did was we used the distance as a mask basically to drive a vertex shader that pulsates every few seconds or so. And yeah, I don't know. It's a cute little uh, detail, I thought. Oh yeah, maybe one thing we want to do is just clamp it between zero and one. In general, whenever you're working with color, you want to make sure that you don't go below zero or above one, unless, you know, you have a good reason for it. Make sure to give things a name. 
The last thing that we need, we can just copy and paste that from the previous noise is again our good old blue noise. Maybe this one we're gonna do some, we're just gonna change it up a little bit so it doesn't look like it's, you know, a seamless continuation. And same idea here, it's just, we just want this so that we can add a different hue uh, on top of the flesh just to make it a bit less uh, uniform. And that's basically it. And it might look a bit hideous right now, but uh, don't worry, this is not this is not for us, this is for the computer. More specifically, this is gonna be for the shader in Unreal to use as, uh, as masks, like in Photoshop. And, um, but yeah, but that that's all there is to it. It's, it's not that crazy, right? So that was it for the vertex color chapter. In the next chapter, which is one of the most important ones, we are gonna turn this, this node graph into an HDA. I'm also gonna talk about the special Unreal attributes that we need so that Houdini can tell Unreal what it wants to do. So we need that, for instance, to apply materials onto uh, the right surface, on the flesh, we want the flesh material, on the concrete, we want the concrete material. And I'm also gonna tell you about a lot of other things that you can do with that. All right, I hope you had fun, and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.